People pay out good money and frequently travel some distance to see a football team. Or a Cracker Jack track star. Or a champion diver. Exhibit their prowess. And with reason. There is something beautiful about the superb coordination, the perfect timing, and the ease with which the trained athlete performs feats impossible to the untrained layman. But if you think that's something, try for a moment to put yourself in the place of the spectator and take a look at this. Here you see the last word in sixth sense coordination, split second timing and sheer downright skill. In most forms of athletics, you merely have the job of training your limbs and muscles to coordinate in doing the right thing at the right moment. But flying an airplane is different. Actually, an airplane designer begins with a pilot. He gives the pilot a new and much more complicated set of limbs. To the pilot's arms are added ailerons and elevators. To his feet is added a rudder. Dozens of instruments allow his eyes to see things they couldn't see otherwise. But what's all this got to do with acrobatics? Just this. The neophyte truly becomes an aviator the day he and the airplane become one. The day the airplane is no longer a separate entity, but merely an extension of the pilot. You rarely do acrobatics in the presence of the enemy. But acrobatics are a vital factor in this process of welding pilot and airplane. After you've done enough of them, you and the airplane are just as much at home upside down or in an inverted 45 degree angle as you are in level flight. Here you see Joe Student ready to begin his study of intermediate acrobatics. We'll let Joe be our guinea pig for this picture. Yes, Joe, you. And we'll use that SNJ over there for this part of the course. Wait a minute. You don't want anything lying around loose that might jam the controls or conk you on the chin during a slow roll. You'd better have a look in the cockpit first. And you better check the rear cockpit too. Be sure the stick is secured. And the safety belt. Otherwise, they might bang around and cause trouble. Also, you'll want to see that the filler caps are tight so you don't get a gasoline bath. Before you climb in, you'd better check the safety belt in the front cockpit, too. It's the only thing that will keep you and the airplane together during certain maneuvers. So better be sure it's properly secured to the seat. And after it's buckled, cinch up on the adjustable straps. Okay, take it away. And now, Joe, while we're climbing, let's go over a couple of the things you'll want to bear in mind. First of all, if you're diving or spinning, the altimeter won't keep up with you. Watch out or it'll fool you. Also, if you happen to be over water, be careful. It's hard to judge your altitude in recovering. And let's get high enough before we start our acrobatics. 3,000 feet is the minimum for starting a loop. This is our first maneuver. Let's take plenty of room and go up to at least 6,000 feet. All right. Now we balance the plane in level flight. Set the throttle for 26 inches with 150 miles per hour indicated. 32 inches is your limit 
and should not be exceeded. RPM, you set for 2,000. Your mixture, of course, is rich. Now, before we go into that loop, let's put some marks here on the screen over the neutral position of stick and rudder pedals. So the audience watching this picture will have a clearer idea of just what you're doing with the controls. Now, before starting the maneuver, you want to be sure your wings are level. The bank and turn indicators should be centered so you're in even, balanced flight. If you don't look to these things, you'll be thrown off heading and will end up by doing a corkscrew instead of a loop. And a corkscrew instead of a loop during the final check will get you a bad, bad mark from the instructor. To start the loop, you'll need an airspeed of 180 miles per hour. So you ease gently forward on the stick, dropping her nose about 20 degrees. All right, to begin the maneuver, we ease back gently on the stick. Gently, Joe, gently. This isn't an N3N. And that isn't a loop. It's more like an oval. If you'd brought that stick back any more sharply, you'd have done an L-shaped maneuver and climbed into a stall. But don't go to the other extreme either. The idea is to begin easing back gently on the stick and gradually increasing your pull. If you don't keep increasing the pull, you'll do this. Let's go back to the beginning and try again. First, level wings. Check turn and bank indicator. Drop the nose 20 degrees to pick up speed. When it reaches 180 miles per hour, ease back on the stick. Gently at first. And give her all the juice she'll take, right up to the 32 inch limit. But no more. Now as her nose comes up over the horizon, Gradually increase your pull on the stick. At the same time, add a little right rudder. Right rudder, Joe. Oh, well. No, Joe, that wasn't right. You know what engine torque is, Joe? The motion of the propeller, which is a clockwise motion, tends to pull the plane's nose over to the left. A little while ago, when you balanced the plane in level flight, you set your rudder tab out to the left to correct for this torque pull. The stream of air coming back against the tab pushes the rudder over to the right and keeps the nose pulled around in place. But you made this adjustment when the plane was traveling 150 miles per hour. What happens when you slow down to 90, for instance? The engine torque remains about the same, but the reduced speed means less air flowing past the rudder. So the rudder tab will not cause the rudder to correct enough, and torque will again pull the nose over to the left. To correct this, ease on a little right rudder. Or, what about 200 miles per hour? Torque remains about the same, but the increased speed puts so much air across your rudder that it overcorrects pulling your nose over to the right. You correct this by applying left rudder. In other words, at slow speeds, you correct with right rudder. At high speeds, with left rudder. As you pull up in a loop, your speed will often drop to around 100 miles per hour. As it drops, ease on right rudder. As soon as you're vertical, throw your head way back until you can see the opposite horizon coming around upside down. 
like this. When your nose is about 30 degrees above the opposite horizon, like this, start to ease off on the stick to round out your loop. How much do you ease off? Enough so the seat of your pants maintains a comfortable pressure on the seat of the plane, but no more. And keep it that way. Then ease back on the stick for recovery to normal flight. Now, you want to try it? Okay. First, level wings. Next, turn and bank indicator center. We drop her nose to pick up 180. And then ease back on the stick, gently at first. As her nose comes up over the horizon, we steadily increase pressure on the stick. We use a little right rudder to correct for torque. Throw your head way back. And as you see the opposite horizon coming around upside down to about here, begin to ease off on the stick. Just enough so the seat of your pants maintains a comfortable pressure on the seat of the plane, but no more. Then ease back on the stick, applying a little left rudder as she picks up speed on the way down. Now, how about another one? Nothing hard about that, is there? 